Hey everyone, Dr. Levy here, and today I'm going to share another interesting case with you. This is a shoulder MRI, and as we always do, we'll start with some anatomy. So this is a coronal sequence, coronal fluid sensitive sequence. This is superior towards the patient's head. This is inferior or towards the patient's feet, lateral aspect uh, or outside um, of the image, and then this is more medial heading towards the patient's chest. And so this is the humeral head. So this is the top of your shoulder or your arm. So here's the head and here's the shaft of the bone. This is the glenoid. So think of this as sort of a ball socket, this being the ball, this being the socket. And um, there are you know, a few other structures which help to keep this in place. We have your, your joint capsule, and then we also have your uh, rotator cuff tendons. So there are four rotator cuff tendons heading from anterior to posterior. This is the subscapularis tendon. Here's the supraspinatus tendon. Here's the infraspinatus tendon. And then here's the teres minor tendon. And these all uh, function to help you be able to rotate your humeral head at, at the glenohumeral joint or at your shoulder joint. Moving to uh, an axial series. So this is looking, now we're, we're cutting the uh, patient from superior to inferior, so we're cutting this way. So here is anterior, the patient's front, here's posterior, the patient's back, here's lateral or the outside, here's medial towards the patient's chest. And so this is a patient who came in with shoulder pain. Uh, they described that their uh, shoulder felt like it popped out. This happened while um, they were uh, doing uh, an athletic activity. And so this is a patient who had an anterior glenohumeral dislocation. And so let's look at some of those findings. So coming from superior to inferior, the humeral head should be a nice round circle as we head more in, uh, more inferiorly. So it should have this nice round shape. And unfortunately, what we're seeing here is an impaction fracture. Hopefully, you can appreciate this marrow edema and appreciate that the contour of the humeral head is different here than it is here. So this is abnormal, and this is what happens when a patient dislocates anteriorly. The humeral head right here moves anteriorly and uh, confuses or bangs against, for lack of a better word, the glenoid and the glenoid labrum. And so this glenoid labrum is here, this, this black or darker signal structure right here. This is torn from the glenoid. Hopefully you can appreciate this normal triangular black signal, uh, which is immediately against the glenoid. This helps broaden that socket. Remember I mentioned that ball socket helps broaden it to help that humeral head stay in place. Unfortunately, here, this is torn. So these are the common findings we see in a glenohumeral humeral dislocation. We can also, just moving back to our coronal image, we can see that the joint capsule, which is here, uh, the uh, one of the ligaments which forms the joint capsule is torn from the labrum. It's stripped here from the labrum. So that's another finding. And, the, and what happens with these patients is especially when they're younger, they're very prone to dislocate again if this is not fixed or is not surgically repaired. And so this is a patient who will have to have their capsule repaired and have to have, um, have, to have surgery, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, this is the time of year where we see these injuries, but you know we, we um, see a lot of these. And so um, it's something that we're very comfortable diagnosing um, and hopefully you get an appreciation for what we're looking for and just how well we can see this type of injury. Okay, uh, until next month, I hope you all stay safe, and I'll be back again next month to review another interesting case. Till then, take care.